Back to the wire bond. We just uh, saw in the news last week that SanDisk did uh, achieved a nine stack chip stack using wire bond. And there's some other technologies out there that claim to either um, be a good substitution for wire bond or a less, uh, more cost effective alternative for um, TSV. When it comes to the point, do you need TSV? Is that not going to be a, an alternative? Vertical circuits, I think, has a great solution. I'm much more familiar with that than uh, 3D Plus's solution. Why free die and die? That's what it is. Yeah. It, uh, I think there are, if you can do it without resorting to more sophisticated 3D technology, and today, TSVs and any of the forms of bonding we talk about are more sophisticated. Mm -hmm. So wire bonding's inexpensive, it's well understood, it's been practiced for decades. If you can make it work, that's probably the right answer today. But you're not going to get the improvements outside of density from doing wire bonding. Um, if you want to improve power, if you want to improve bandwidth, um, I think at some level if you want to improve manufacturability, TSV is really a better alternative for a lot of those cases. I agree with you, Bob. And the questions you know, that people should ask themselves are why do we need to do TSVs or 3D? Mm -hmm. So, you know, it breaks down into a couple of different things. You know, one could be form factor. Mm -hmm. And if it's purely form factor driven, right, then you probably don't need TSVs. Okay. You could use wire bonding because it's dirt cheap. Mm -hmm. There's very little that can compete with wire bonding in terms of cost, right? If that's all you need, you're not concerned about performance improvements, mm -hmm. power reduction, mm -hmm. functionality, right? then, you know, this could work for you. But why and continue to um, push forward with developing new ways to do wire bond in that case? It works, okay. and there is a lot of history behind it. Okay. It's a little bit like aluminum, right? People, when copper came up, yeah. people said aluminum was going to die yeah. very quickly, and it's still here. Yeah. It's cheap, yeah. and it works. Okay. And there's so much of history behind it. But, you know, if you want something more than that, you want better performance, you want lower power consumption, and you need um, functionality, then this is really the way to go. We noticed a significant uptake over the last year mm -hmm. from our customer base just in interest mm -hmm. in this topic. Uh, it's now very common for it to pop up at our roadmap meetings mm -hmm. and et cetera. And somewhere around maybe half of our top 25 customers are having serious discussions with us on this. We had a few questions go back and forth on this about whether um, the tools will be ready for market adoption, but what? And, but then there are to, there are people who think that we can't do have market adoption without the tools. We are obviously very strongly guided by what our customers want us to do, and um, although we've been investigating this area for many years. Like I said, it hasn't been until the past year or so that we've really seen uh, customers bringing it up in the level of priority, or I should say at least our, our, our major customers that drive the high end of, of the flow that we, that we develop. Um, so from that perspective, our position is basically we have a very complete set of uh, implementation tools, design planning tools, sign-off tools, and we're building 3D on top of what we have. Okay. So it's not really revolutionary. Okay. It's more evolutionary. Okay. And having that baseline of, of design flow is, is very important. You've got to look at what stages the technology is in. Mm -hmm. So in the very early stages, you probably would not have too many people using these design tools. Right. There'd be this, what Qualcomm calls the pathfinding okay, tool, okay. right? Yep. And this is probably something that a guru of system integration mm -hmm. would use within the company. Mm -hmm. Maybe a couple of other people would use it, but it's not really you know, something where Synopsys would sell thousands of seats. Mm -hmm. right. And then, you know, but you need it to get everything going. Right. And you just need quick and dirty calculations on, you know, how much power would it consume, what would be the performance, and so on. At some point when it starts becoming more real, mm -hmm. that's when you need, you know, the full suite of tools which go onto a platform that's, you know, vectored in the industry and, um, you know, it's, it's a robust platform. We designed our first 3D logic devices and our demo devices that many of you have seen. 
um, in 2003. And that was difficult, but it wasn't impossible. I think that what we found, and if you look at the parts that we're currently commercializing in 3D, they're, in the grand scheme of things, relatively simplistic. They're memories, they're sensors, they're repeating patterns that in 3D are easy to envision. So we didn't need those pathfinding tools. Um, so we were, we were limited to a set of applications mm -hmm. that simpler home-cooked 3D, 2.5D tools could help us produce. Um, I think that we certainly, moving forward as you get into true 3D logic, that's where you need all the sophisticated tools, real pathfinding, real 3D synthesis, real 3D place and route. Um, and the, the tricks that we did are not for the faint of heart in the past. So. I, we have a question here from the, from the attendees. It's from um, Phil Guru, actually, Sitaram. Hey, it's, uh, it's a comment more than a question, I think, but I'm sure you'll ad address it. But CMOS image sensors are form factor driven and they use TSV now. So they are the early adopters. You're right. You know, it's already there. But again, it's form factor driven. And so it's fairly straightforward to do these, you know, not to sort of reduce the amount of complexity that's involved in doing something like this. But CMOS image sensors are relatively straightforward. You know, when you think of a true heterogeneous integration, where, for instance, you're pulling logic from one supplier, memory from somewhere else, analog from somewhere else, that's when you need to have the whole infrastructure in place. And by that, I mean the tools, the processes, the, um, you know, and again, I'm talking about both regular process equipment, design tools need to be in place, roadmaps need to be in place. There's a lot that needs to happen before you can do that kind of uh, 3D integration. There is a cost per square millimeter on that circuit board. And every square millimeter that you take up has a, a fundamental cost because it complicates the packaging of other devices. So wire bonding is a higher cost alternative because the footprint on the circuit board is more expensive. The reason for TSVs in many of those sensor devices, if maybe not all of them today, is that you can shrink the footprint, you can shrink the height, and we all want smaller, thinner, lighter cell phones. And we're willing to pay a cost premium today for that that packaging aspect. 